morning, folks. It's Friday. Are you happy it's Friday? I bet you're happy it's Friday, aren't you? Yes, and uh, the week went fast, which is, well, I hope it went fast for you. It's a good sign when the week goes fast. It means that uh, we're moving through time. I personally am very glad it is the 22nd of January. And here we go. Spring. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on to spring. Um, I got a kick out of uh, watching my neighbor once when I was in Quinnell years ago. And uh, it was April. And uh, he really, you know, the weather was improving. But he really was sick of the snow. And he was shoveling the snow off of his lawn onto the road. <laughs> it's a great sign. And a really good idea. By the way, I thought that was a really good idea. <laughs> Let's bring on the spring, yeah. Um, we're all looking forward to the, the day when the sun is shining. And uh, we can go over to our friends' houses and play a game of cards. And, and oops, I'm a Baptist. I shouldn't say that. No, I'm just kidding. That was like the Baptists of old. No, I'm looking forward to the day when we can uh, hang out and... Uh, have life groups and Bible studies and watch movies and play Frisbee on the street, which we could do now if there was no snow on the street. But uh, but we're looking forward to the spring, right? And we're all looking forward to the the happily ever, ever after that's, um, that's written into our makeup as people because the Bible says that God has put eternity in our hearts. That means he he has wired into us who we were before the fall of man before we before we fell in sin and we know what paradise is supposed to be like um, deep down inside that's why we uh, we write stories about it we write happily ever after stories we um, we have perfect societies in novels and and books, and we don't quite get it right because in our sinful minds we can't quite grasp um, how great life would be with Jesus as the King over every heart and over every part of the earth and the universe, right? And He still is, but um, for now um, we're praying His kingdom come, His will would be done on earth as it is in the rest of the universe in heaven, because because His kingdom will be what we have wanted our whole lives, the culmination of every human hope and every joy. C.S. Lewis said that the glimpses of joy that we get down here are amazing, right? We, we get them when we're on a, on a boat on a beautiful lake and we're, we're just soaring across the waves, right? When, when, we, um, when we see an eagle um, flying over the lake, when we see a sunset, these are, uh, these are hints of glory. There is such a thing as glory and there are hints of it everywhere. And the hints are overwhelming and its scent is in the air. That's what Rich Mullins said. Because we have it written into our DNA of what, what this glory will be like. Well, in history, um, there were glimpses of God's glory on earth. And uh, one of them was found in 1 Chronicles chapter 1. When Solomon became king of Israel after his father David... The kingdom described in First Chronicles is unlike anything that's ever been on earth. And uh, I want to go to the beginning because this is a context for Psalm 72 um, that we're going to dive into today. But let's, let's pray and ask God for his blessing. Father, give us a glimpse of your glory and the hope that is ours through this word. And may our eyes be fixed on Jesus, the King that we long for deep down inside in your name. Amen. So here we are, folks. Psalm 72. Okay, the background of this. As, as Solomon's beginning his reign, and he wrote Psalm 72, as he begins his reign as monarch in Israel, Solomon in 1 Chronicles 1 is recorded as asking God for wisdom. Solomon, son of... This is 1 Chronicles 1. Solomon, son of David, took firm control of his kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him, and made him very powerful. Solomon called together all the leaders of Israel, the generals and the captains of the army, the judges, and all the polit political and clan leaders, 
Then he led the entire assembly to the place of worship in Gideon, Gibeon, for God's tabernacle was located there. This was the tabernacle that Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. That night, God appeared to Solomon after the worship and said, What do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Solomon replied to God, You showed me great love and faithful love to, to David, my father, and now you've made me king in his place. O Lord, my God, please continue to keep your promise to David, my father, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly. For who could possibly govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Because your greatest desire is to help your people, and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies, or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future and if you continue to read about king solomon um in first chronicles one which i would challenge you to do because it's it's fantastic you will you'll be fascinated it's an interesting historical snapshot um, of the greatest human kingdom that's ever been on earth and an imperfect picture of what life will be like on earth with Jesus as the king. So that's why you need to read First Chronicles starting with 1. Um, because you'll see through Solomon's exploits and his adventures and how he reigns um, and his accomplishments that you will see a picture of what life will be like when Jesus is king on earth. Because, and you know why this happened to Solomon is because at the beginning of his career as king, and I, I stress at the beginning, the first thing he did was he took his all the leaders and they sought God. They went to worship God. Um, they seek his face. They went. They want his guidance and blessing. Solomon wants God's wisdom so he can rule in justice. And that's where Psalm 72 starts, okay? Where he says, Give your love of justice to me, the king, O oh God, and righteousness to me. To David's son he's asking for God's character and he's saying help me judge your people in the right way let the for the poor always be treated fairly this was Solomon's heart the, the heart of God in Solomon's heart the Spirit of God and Solomon says may the mountains bring prosperity and the hills be fruitful well the mountains sure did have you heard the legend of King Solomon's mines man gold coming out his ears and interestingly this is a prophecy too about what heaven will be like on earth because the beautiful city the new jerusalem the streets the pavement is gold so jesus the great king that we will all have down here one day will have all the wealth of the universe it's all his anyway right every gold and every mine every beautiful fish in the sea every wheat field it's all the earth is the lord's and everything in it but uh, in verse 4, what he does with that gold that comes out of those mountains is that he says, Help me defend the poor, to rescue the children of the needy, to crush the oppressors. And that's what Solomon did. That's why his kingdom at the beginning was so great. Um, Solomon is prophesying more than he realizes. Um, one commentator said, As the psalmist pours out his petitions, they glide into prophecies. Um, because they are des they desire fashion, um, sorry, for they are desires fashioned upon promises, and in their earnestness, the pledge of the realization comes true. Solomon's prophesying about becoming king. Jesus Christ, who would defend the poor, who would free us and help the needy, crush the evil ones, uh, the great and coming Messiah. John said that um, if everything Jesus did while he was on earth, um, Jesus did many other things as well besides the stuff we know about what he did on earth. If every one of the things Jesus did were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have enough room for the books that would be written about him. See, Solomon was prophesying about the time Jesus would come, the first and the second coming of Jesus. 
And when Jesus came, just the three years and the 33 years of ministry he did here on earth, he did more to help people than we could ever possibly imagine. Um, the amount of people he healed and fed and loved and took care of and the, um, the amount of evil, of course we know evil was defeated by his life and his death and his resurrection. And he has ascended to his throne as the king and he's the coming king. This is the gospel, the good news is that Jesus um, is the king we've always wanted, the king we've always um, pictured in our mind. May the king's rule be like spring rain on freshly cut grass. What does freshly cut grass smell like? Oh man, it smells amazing, right? Spring rain on freshly cut grass. The picture of the, the resurrection of the earth in the spring with the the scent of glory in the air everywhere with no more problems no more pain no more sorrow and in verse 7 he says may the godly flourish during his reign may there be abundant prosperity may he reign from sea to sea that's on our parliament buildings because jesus will reign from sea to shining sea right sea to sea to sea jesus is going to be king over canada I can't wait for that day when Canada worships him. Um, I love this. Desert nomads will come before him. His enemies will fall before him in dust. The western kings of Tarshish and other lands will bring him tribute. The eastern kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. Well, this happened to Solomon. And in Revelation 21, it says in Revelation 21, 24, the nations will walk by the city's light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into the city. Kings bringing tribute to the king. On no day will his gates ever be shut. That means the poor can come in any time. All of us that um, are normal people, that are billionaires here on earth, we will have everything we need and everything we need will be Jesus and we, we will get to go and see him and bring him our songs and the things we have made as tribute to him. He takes delight in the beauty of even things like rocking chairs that Christian men make for old women in the church. You see, Jesus, our king, will reign. The glory of the nations will be brought into his city. So he will rescue the poor. He will help the oppressed. He'll feel, he feels pity for the needy and the weak, and he will rescue them. What king on earth, maybe besides David and Solomon, and uh, good kings like Josiah, have ever cared properly for the weak and the needy? Well, they're flying around in their, their big jets and their, with their marble countertops and, and their golf courses. I mean, who cares for the king? Who cares for the poor? Jesus does. He will redeem them from oppression and violence. For their lives are precious to him. Your life and the lives of the people around you are precious to the Lord Jesus. He loves you. All people matter to Jesus. You know, we got humans have lists of these people that, that matter to God and the people that don't matter to God. Jesus doesn't have any such list. All their lives are precious to him. So, long live the king. Amen? Long live the king. May there be abundant grain throughout the land, flourishing even on the hilltops. May the fruit trees flourish like the fruit trees of Lebanon. May the people thrive like grass in a field. May the king's name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun shines. May all the nations be blessed through him. And may all the nations bring him praise. Let me tell you something about Jesus that's cool. I'm in uh, Shoppers Drug Mart the other day. I went to the big city, and uh, there's the, there's another magazine cover, Life magazine. There's his face, and on the magazine cover, and it says Jesus, and then the quote, "Who do you say I am?" Jesus is everywhere. There have been more songs and poems and books written about him, and movies and TV series and magazine covers about him than any other man in history. You know why? Because he is the great king. Who do you say I am? Well, I say Jesus is my king. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone is the king that does such wonderful things. That's Psalm 72, 18. The only king who ever was that didn't mess up somehow. 
praise his glorious name. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The kingdom of heaven here on earth with Jesus as king, as determined in Revelation 21 and 22, will make what you read about Solomon in 1 Chronicles pale in comparison. But read it. Read 1 Chronicles. Read Revelation 21 and 22. You'll get such a hopeful vision of what life will be like when Jesus is here as our king. But I need to ask you this question this morning. Is Jesus your king? Have you bowed your knee to him? Have you bowed your heart to him? Um, the Lord opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Do you want him to be the ruler of your life and of this earth to be to, to make it everything that we've ever wanted it to be? Because folks, if you're sitting on the throne of your heart, when you and I are the king, it doesn't work. It doesn't work when anybody else is king. But it will work wonderfully when Jesus is king. And your heart will work properly when he's sitting on the throne of your life and your heart and your mind and your actions. So today, reach out to him in faith. Make it so. Make it. Make Jesus your king. Submit to his rule because he's going to rule anyway, right? So let's pray. I ask you, Jesus, we come to you and ask you to be our king this day. We ask you to take the poor and to direct us to them, to the needy, the oppressed, the downtrodden, that Lord, we would lift them up and show them you. And Jesus, may they know that you are the king that we have always longed for. We can't wait for you to be our king. We ask you to come back to fix this mess. But we ask you now as your emissaries that we would be ambassadors of grace and hope and prophets that would point people to you. And we long for your second coming, your return, where you, where you will rule on earth as you do in heaven right now. But Lord, we pray that God, anybody that's doubting would doubt their doubt and they would trust your word that's been here for thousands of years now. God, we long for the day we see you, but we long that the lost and the hurting and the poor would come to you as their king and that the evil will be taken down, that, Lord, you would crush it now and that, Lord, you bring us to be bearers of light into the darkness. I thank you for your people that are watching. I pray, Lord, for everybody watching to reach out to you, Jesus, to be humble before you, that they would reach out to you as king. We love you, God. We praise your name forever and ever. Amen. Love you guys. And uh, please keep sending me prayer requests. And I'm, I'm praying for you. And uh, if you if you don't live in Sigamoose area, uh, we've got pastors all over the province that I can put you in touch with. Um, so you can get some hope. And, and, and uh, they would encourage you somehow the best they can in the middle of a crazy pandemic. God is good. Um, check out your church online Sunday mornings. Ours is online at 9. And uh, But have a great weekend. Jesus is your king. Forever and ever. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Have a good one. See ya. Thank you.